I'm continuing my series of games played by Alexei Shirov, and I'm going to show you one of my encounters against him. This was played in 1990 in an open tournament in Norway, the legendary Gausdal tournaments. Uh, Alexei was 17 years old. He'd already had some success, but frankly, I didn't know very much about him at all. We both had three out of three in the tournament going into this game. And I played my normal game, you know, I was, uh, in those years, pretty adventurous. And, well, it goes without saying that Alexei has a very adventurous style as well. I think if I'd known a little bit more about him, I might have played differently. Anyway, here's the game. Alexei Shirov with white. He's played d4, and I've played this tricky little system with bishop b4 check. I rather like this, actually. There are some funny quirks about it, but actually we transpose quite quickly into a variation of the Nimzo Indian like this and then F3. So we're back in an F3 variation of the Nimzo Indian, which is a very sharp variation. And you can see it's a curious mixture of um, the Nimzo and the Benoni as well. Typical Benoni pawn structure, but with this bishop on b4 instead of on g7. And now a6. I started to advance on the queen side straight away. You know, I just wanted to, to get my counterplay going on the queen side. I think with hindsight, probably knight d7 is, and then rook e8, just sensible development is better. B5 looked quite attractive. You know, if I could get in C4 quickly, then that's a nice counterplay. I could use the, the C5 square. But A4 is a good move, breaking up these pawns, and that makes it more difficult for black to achieve counterplay on the queen side. I've got to take. And queen takes. So it's, it's not so easy for black when these pawns are split, actually, to, to achieve counterplay. Knight d7, bishop e2, and knight b6. Um, I think I probably should have played the knight into e5 and head to the king side. But the knight is a little bit offside on the queen side. And actually, the queen wants to go back to c2 anyway. But I was intent on getting my queenside counterplay going with a5 and then with c4. And over these next move, few moves, we basically ignore each other. <laughs> um, Alexei goes for the king side, and I continue with my queen side counterplay. So it's game on. Knight d1, knight fd7, knight e3, no surprise, that's heading for the king side. Bishop a6 and knight f5. That's quite scary. So these knights are massing on the king side. And at this point, I thought, okay, I'd better do something about this. So I thought I'd boot that knight away. G6. It went into h6, check. And king h8. Bishop e3. Well, there's nothing immediate for white on the king's side, so I thought the best thing to do was just continue my queenside play. And I played a4, perhaps... Well, we'll see why in, in a moment, actually. Um, basically, you know, I want to break things open on the queenside. And now f4 from Shirov. So he's starting to build up play on the king's side. And here, if I'd been a bit more switched on, I'd have started to hoover, hoover well, at least one pair of minor pieces off the board. I think bishop c5 is a reasonable move. And I think black's position is actually still okay, because after this exchange, then that knight could well hop into d3, supported by the bishop and the pawn. But after f4, I was keen to sort of plug the king's side I played f6, rook d1 from white. Um, interesting move, actually. I, I, I'm sure that Shirov just played that just to bring the rook into play. 
not calculated at all. And again, I think I should play bishop c5, actually. Queen c7. King h1. So he's obviously preempting the bishop coming to this diagonal. And here I thought it would be a good idea to play king g7. If the knight goes back, then I've got h5. Um, and I thought I'd be... Well, I wanted to force this move f5, basically. And that's what was played. I should have played f5. And the reason I wanted to do that was to gain this square for my knight. And I thought this looked much healthier for my king. With the knight here on this glorious square, also protecting g6. Later on, it might be able to hop into d3. Anyway, it's just a great square, e5. But I'd certainly underestimated um, his idea. He simply took on g6. I thought that would be helpful for black, because then the h-file opens, and then he just put the knight back on g4. It's a very good move. Basically, it just eliminates that knight, which is a, just a superb piece. Of course, I want to play knight d3 here. You know, that would just really get in the way of, of white's pieces. But the problem is, there's a pin. I simply can't do it. So after knight g4, in fact, white is threatening to play bishop h6 check and then uh, take on f6, probably. I think there are other moves as well. Yeah, bishop h6 looks pretty nasty. Um, so I had to exchange. And that does allow the bishop into e6. But I still, I thought I've got counterplay. So now you can see why I was keen to advance these pawns. I want to break open the queen side and get a powerful pass pawn. Obviously, if this, ta this is taken, then I'll be able to take with the queen. That's one thing. But uh, don't forget, also, I've opened up this diagonal. So actually, the rook is now threatened. And it felt to me after c3 as though things were, were actually turning my way. You know, I've got my counterplay going on the queen side. But very coolly, he just played his rook up to f3. But still, I wasn't too worried. I felt as though my counterplay was coming. This knight was back in the game. Um, if I could tempt him into taking here, then I've got a strong pass pawn. This knight is looking in all directions, might come to e5. But he just very coolly, he played bishop e6. And here I started to realise that actually my king could be in very serious trouble. I would like to play pawn takes pawn, of course, but then knight f5 check is just winning. For example, after pawn takes knight, rook g3 check, and now my king is caught. Rook h3, king g7, and now bishop h6. And once the king moves to the h-file, then bishop takes rook, discovered check. Disaster. So around this point, I thought, OK, that's a dangerous piece. I better exchange it off. Knight takes bishop, rook takes and then, well, I still haven't got time to do anything here. There's there's a pin on the C file, so I can't take on B2. But I thought, OK, I need to just protect my king and putting the rook to the H file also doesn't look bad. You know, there could potentially be some counterplay there with maybe a rook sack and the other rook coming over. But it seemed right to, to cover the H file anyway. Now, rook F3. Didn't really understand that move, but who cares? We're, we're both running short of time here as well. Um, I thought queen c4 looked like a good move because now the queen is protected and I'm starting to threaten to take here or maybe queen b3 and go for a queen trade. So Shirov took on c3 and I just nudged the bishop back to c5. Just felt like a nice diagonal because, 
you never know. There could be potentially some threats here. Um, but in any case, good diagonal. And now, you know, I could be ready just to advance that pawn. And at this moment, okay, we've we've both got a couple of minutes on the clock. Uh, I think that the time control was at move 40. I'm sure it was. And I just felt like I was doing pretty well here. But I got my comeuppance. Okay, maybe I'll have a little slurp of tea and you try and work out how white should play from this position. These next few moves came with a clatter. E5 by Alexei. Well, okay, didn't expect that, but looks like he's throwing everything at, at my king or starting to. It opens up the diagonal for the queen. Well, I haven't got a lot of choice here. Okay, I just took it very quickly. Then he went bang. Oh, okay. What's going on here? Yeah, I hadn't realized that was possible, but hey, no time to calculate much. Now, here I realized I had to take it because if the king goes backwards, then that's too loose. Knight d6... That gets taken, and queen g6, no, can't allow this. That's a disaster. And mate, of course, threatened on f7. No, after knight f5, I have to take it. But, well, I couldn't see a forced win, so let's just remove it. Rook g3, check. Okay, forced move, the king has to go back. Queen takes f5, bang. Mate threatened. Okay, no problem. I move my queen over. Felt, felt like a force move. I've just got to do it. Of course, if the queens are exchanged, I'm a piece up. Everything's fine. Queen g6. Bang. Okay. Queen g7. Mate. Threatened. Well, excuse me. Queen f7. Mate. Threatened. Queen g7 is also a threat as well. But well, let's go with queen f7 as well. So, no problem. I can still defend that. Rook a7. Well, I kind of got this far at the start of uh, these sacrifices and thought, oh, I'm still okay here. Seconds on the clock. I think I'm all right. Bang! Rook h3. Oh, okay. That one I missed. That is serious. What do I do? Rook takes rook threatened, obviously. Where can that rook move to? Hmm... Hasn't got a move. Okay. Got a take. Rook takes rook. Bang. Check. King e7. Bang. d6. I'm afraid that was a punch I couldn't get up from. d6 is the end of the game. I resigned here. If bishop takes, then queen f7 check. King d8. Rook takes bishop. Rook goes in the way, and queen takes rook mate. It's funny. Our pieces have just kind of crossed over. <laughs> um, I'm a move away from, from mate, but he gets there first, unfortunately. Um, it's a funny game because we largely ignored each other. <laughs> I was playing on the queen side. He was playing on the king side, but he got there first, and wow. What a series of punches from there. E5 and yeah, well, let's let's leave that final position on the board. Yeah, uh, a, a, an absolute flurry of punches that I couldn't get up from. So that was my first encounter with, with Alexei. I did play him a couple of years later and, well, we had another entertaining game that, that actually ended in a draw where I think we both missed wins. Um, but yeah, from... This first encounter with him, then I had total respect for him and his abilities. And over the next uh, couple of weeks, I'm going to show you more from Alexei because he is a truly wonderful player and, yeah, great, great guy.